Hi everyone, I'm Krista Seiden, Analytics Advocate at Google, and today I'm joined by Breen Baker, who is a product manager here at Google on Google Analytics 360. In this quick tip video, Breen is going to talk about data freshness in Google Analytics and how to look at that data in many different ways. Yeah, thanks Krista. So um, obviously data freshness is a really important topic. Um, we hear about this all the time. Uh, uh, publishers are super interested in data freshness, but it goes beyond other verticals. Uh, we hear a lot about it from e-commerce and, and entertainment as well. Um, but really, everybody is interested in data freshness because there's a well-known uh, business axiom that you know if you have data that your competitors don't have, or if you can have that data faster than your competitors can have it, uh, then that's a competitive advantage. And totally. I don't think I have to prove that to, to anyone. No. Nope. Um, uh, but there are various uh, data access points uh, in GA and various uh, freshnesses within those. Um, and we get a lot of questions, people asking us when to use this, when to use that. Um, uh, so we just thought we'd go through it for on a high level and uh, give you guys uh, an overview. So uh, let's jump over to the slide. Um, here I've just shown kind of really at a high level, very high level, um, the four like major access points that we have with GA. We do have other exports. Uh, we have integrations to our ad services. And we have file exports, just flat file exports. I'm excluding those from this discussion for now. Uh, so really, we have a, a real-time UI and API. Uh, we have our standard reporting UI and API. Uh, we have our unsampled reports, which does have a UI and API component as well, uh, uh, and BigQuery. Um, so real-time reports are our freshest data source. Uh, the, the latency is seconds. Um, if you load those reports, you will actually see them refreshing, uh, and you'll see the data flowing in. Um, that actually only has a history of 30 minutes, though. Um, so the use is, is very valuable in terms of knowing when I launch something or when I'm expecting something to happen, did I see a spike in behavior? Did I see a spike in maybe traffic coming from a certain region? Uh, but, and, and that's very powerful, but it's limited, right? Um, it's a really fast stream and we can't give you everything, uh, can't give you everything custom through that, right? So uh, it's limited in what it can be used for. Um, the reporting API, however, it contains that full flexibility, um, and it really should be used for doing that more deep diagnosis if you do notice something in real-time uh, uh, API or, or just uh, from you know, back-end statistics. This is where you can really dive in to figure out what exactly is happening. Maybe there's a JavaScript area on some page, or maybe there's some region where the, the campaign code wasn't firing correctly. Um, that's really the place, you know, reporting API and UI is really the place where you're going to go solve that. Uh, the latency there is, is hours. As you guys know, we have an SLA for four hours. It's usually uh, uh, much better than that, at least half, about two hours. Uh, and there you, you have the full history um, of, of all of GA. Um, unsampled reports really is just a flavor of that uh, for super large queries. Um, yes, it is the case that if I'm interested in, in new information, I might also want to be, pull, be pulling a lot of historical information at the same time to understand trends um, and be able to predict if what's happening today aligns with what I expect to happen. Um, in those cases, we'll want to use the unsampled uh, reporting API or UI. And like I said, in those cases, uh, the latency is the same and the history is, is the same. Um, BigQuery kind of sits off on the side um, in that it doesn't have a standard UI uh, via GA. Um, but our current integration today does export data uh, multiple times per day, about four times per day. So data gets uh, to your system about six hours latency. Um, the history really is since when you integrated it uh, with GA, uh, but given that BigQuery uh, has its own data storage and processing requirements, that's really unlimited. You can store any amount of data you want in there for all of time. Um, the use there is even to get more detailed, more, more involved into potentially uh, how your user models might change because of the, the data that came in in the last uh, few hours. Mm -hmm. And really BigQuery is going to be a place where you can do uh, not only what you can do in GA, but you can add more data sets, you can add more complex uh, statistical analysis and do, do more than what will be available uh, in GA. Uh, so that's it from a high level. Um, again, to recap, if you're really focused on what's happening right now, like you're launching something right now, you need to check on it, go to the real-time UI. Uh, if you need to diagnose what might have happened in the last hour, two hours or so, reporting UI is your place for that. If you need a really big query, the unsampled reporting API is a great place for that. And lastly, if you want to do something complex and GA just really isn't fitting uh, what you want to do, um, big query is your place for that. Great. Thanks for telling us about those four different access points to get your data freshness in Analytics 360. Um, and thanks, you guys, you guys, for listening.